the beginning CompuTax news coverage, we already have some pretty highlighting items from AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA. And it's going to be all three major silicon players in the space. AMD news is the most interesting. It's what we have the most depth on right now. And that includes some launch timing and expectations of what AMD is showing and when. There is a keynote this week. Actually, it'll be within like 12 hours of this video going live. But uh, it's probably not going to have quite as much as you're expecting if you've seen some of the rumors. However, there is still uh, additional information on AMD and its Ryzen 3000 series and X570, including power consumption, things like that, that we can share in this video. We'll also be talking to NVIDIA GeForce Super and then the Intel 9900KS. Before that, this video is brought to you by Drop and their HD 6XX headphones. The 6XX headphones offer high quality audio output with wide device compatibility. Masterop's 6XX also includes a six foot cable with 3.5 millimeter plug alongside a quarter inch adapter for those who might want to plug into an amp. The 6XX focuses its energy into balancing the sound, leaning toward warmer and bassier audio. They're also easy to disassemble and replace individual parts, making these headphones trivial to maintain for long-term use. Learn more at the link below. So AMD up first. AMD has its keynote immediately, basically, for this event. This is exclusive to us. We received this information through multiple of our contacts and confirmed it amongst them. So the keynote is supposed to have the X570 unveil. And if you're expecting a lot of detail on specification uh, for the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, if you're, if you're looking for frequencies and overclocking and power and uh, really just about anything with detail prices, you're probably not gonna get most of that. We will be covering the keynote. So hopefully some of this proves to be wrong and there is actually spec information that we can cover and it'll go up same day if so. But our understanding now is that it's mostly an X570 launch. Uh, no specs. Uh, what we do know beyond that, and this may be more interesting for you, is that June 10th is the intended Ryzen 3000 series desktop CPU announcement at E3. And that'll include the lineup of the CPUs, the different SKUs down the stack, the prices, the frequencies, the cache, and all of the other specs to do with the CPU. So you might get one or two of those at the Computex keynote, but everything else will be at E3 on June 10th. July 1st is when the Ryzen 3000 series pre-orders will open and then the X570 pre-orders will open. There's also uh, maybe going to be an embargo list, but it won't be performance review. And then July 7th will be the performance review embargo and the launch of the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs along with X570. 16 core, uh, so we have some information on this as well. There is, as we've said in the past, couple of weeks now there is a 16 core that's confirmed but we have some new information on overclocking and uh, what we have learned is that the 16 core cpus at present are allegedly pushing towards 300 watts under air which in this case means water water cooling but air being ambient temperature not exotic cooling so that's about what we know presently for the upper bound of the power uh, for 16 core we'll have to wait for more information on that and get more detail x570 chipset we have some more hard facts on so the x570 chipset will be 11 watts versus the previous x475.8 watts this is a considerable increase in the uh, heat output of the chipset which is a result of pcie gen 4 from 3 and then some of the boards you'll see some changes to pcb materials or just uh, improvements in well, more focus on signal integrity because of PCIe Gen 4. It's apparently not so easy to just throw into any board. And because of the increase in TDP or increase of chipset power, you're going to see a lot of boards with fans, which you've probably already seen in the last couple of days. The lane assortment we also know now. So 16 total CPU lanes coming off the CPU to the GPU and then four lanes coming from the CPU to M.2 devices. So that'll go to a specific M.2 slot on the board. You'll have to check the motherboard manuals to see which one that is. Uh, also for memory support, we have learned again through trusted sources that it's 3200 megahertz two slot and it'll be a bit lower for four slot. We'll talk about that in some of our motherboard videos coming up this week. Release date again, July 7th. Intel news, this is really pretty straightforward. Intel has an i9-9900KS CPU coming up. The S is for special edition. If you remember the 8086K, it's that. So the 8086K was a, it was an 8700K, the same thing, except it was functionally pre-overclocked. It's, it's basically ships at a higher clock, so they don't call it overclocking, but ships at a higher clock. And uh, the 9900KS, same thing, it'll ship at five gigahertz all core. 
So it's a higher clocked 9900K, the same die, just higher frequency out of the box. The special edition comes sometime probably this year, but we don't firmly know when yet, or uh, in the very least, we, we can't say it. Intel should be announcing details on this later in the week for a firm release date, but that is what the CPU will be pricing TBD at present or at time of filming. Intel also has shown some of the performance of its Ice Lake CPUs, mostly for notebooks. And uh, the demo shown was AMD Picasso versus Intel's new 10 nanometer Ice Lake CPUs with IGPs. And in those demos, Intel had both devices set to 25, they were 25 watt devices. And uh, it, at power parity, Intel was matching or leading Picasso in their benchmarks. Now, big flag here that as always, these are benchmarks conducted by the company. So until we can verify them, we probably shouldn't take that too far because we need to see how well it validates in reality and depends on the workloads, things like that. But from what Intel has shown so far, uh, it does look like the most promising GPU advancement by Intel in its graphics accelerator line that we've seen in a while. So 10 nanometer and Ice Lake are getting to be a bit more serious of a combination for Intel's IGP lineup. Whereas in the past, we've just called them the Intel graphics decelerators because they weren't good at all, but things have changed. So Ice Lake will be among the first uh, to start pushing AMD potentially from Intel's side of things on graphics. And finally, Intel demonstrated variable rate shading testing. You've heard about this in our coverage of RTX when NVIDIA was talking more about uh, variable rate shading, but there's a new 3D Mark feature benchmark that demonstrates variable rate shading performance and it doesn't presently work on all devices and won't. It depends on if they support it, but uh, Intel did show performance uplift there. The question again is, how the image quality is in the Intel demos. It looks like the reduction in quality should be negligible, but we'll have to wait till we get the monitor actually like right in front of our faces to look at it more closely. So that's the news. The 9900KS is really the interesting item for us. We don't cover much mobile, but Intel has put a lot of performance numbers out there on Ice Lake. If you're interested in mobile stuff, you can go look up other coverage. NVIDIA Super, there's not much we can say about this. NVIDIA teased Super, G4 Super recent, a couple days ago. There's a 16 second teaser on it. And uh, what we do know is that it sounds like this could be a higher clocked memory part. So it'd be the same GPUs, 2060, 2070, 2080 probably, with higher frequency memory bumped up. And uh, we also gathered some information that it sounds like there's an RTX 20 series refresh in the works. When that will come out, we're not clear. It's not at this show. It's not at Computex. Uh, more likely maybe a week or two after Computex for additional information, not a launch, but just additional information on this stuff, or at least Wolfenstein RTX, which is something that NVIDIA has been working on as well and will be shown at E3 very likely. Uh, and then finally, there's a news item brought to our attention that apparently NVIDIA has filed for trademarks for 3080, 4080, and 5080. There's some speculation online about NVIDIA is trying to block AMD from using these names, although this is perhaps uh, more fitting for the storyline people like to build between AMD and NVIDIA. In reality, NVIDIA has 1080 and 2080 already and had 980 before that and sort of had an 800 series, but mostly seven. And so I guess the theme here is that NVIDIA is incrementing and 3000, 4000, 5000 were eventually going to happen if they keep skipping the hundreds in between, for example, 10 and 20 other than 16 because 16 is bigger than, than 10, but not quite 20. And so that's why, that's why they used that name. I guess that was the explanation. Either way, uh, 3080, big surprise is a name that Intel or uh, Nvidia rather wants to use. As for whether it's to block AMD, whatever, we'll see, maybe, but it just, it's kind of kind of reading into it quite a lot right now. So that's it for this one. Subscribe to catch the show coverage throughout the week. As noted, some of this was exclusive to us, so you might not have seen it yet uh, unless you checked our article linked in the description below. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly and definitely check back shortly for all of the X570 motherboard coverage that we'll be doing this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.